guys. In this video, we will demonstrate how to remove the board lock on the Ruby native PCB that prevents any attempt to access firmware with the assistance of MRT programmer. It is now possible to turn the native PCB with firmware lock into an unlocked PCB thus enabling the firmware of WD drives to be obtained directly through the original board. Three hard drives are prepared here for demonstration. WD40 Easy AZ with board number 81011. WD20 EF AX with board number 8077. The last one is Western Digital 2.5 inch blue. WD20 SPZX with board number 8065. These are the most popular drives with PCB lock in the market. Now we connect board 8077 to MRT. First, we power up and double click on the Western Digital Utility to check the drive status. Due to the presence of firmware lock, we are not able to identify the family ID. We therefore have to select the family ID manually. The drive now refused access to its firmware, such as SA modules and ROM modules, which is exactly what a firmware lock looks like. In order to remove the PCB lock, we need to get original ROM data from the original PCB board first. Two approaches are recommended. Conventional approach, desolder the ROM chip and place it in the programmer, in which we can read and modify the ROM data so as to remove the lock code. Then we have to solder the ROM chip back on board. The second approach is to use MRT programmer version 3 to read with lead wire. We need to connect the pins of the new programmer to ROM pins on the original board via lead wire. There are two connection methods. One is the direct ROM connection to the PCB only. The lead is connected from programmer to the front of the PCB. Method 2 is to direct ROM connection without disassembling the PCB. The leads are connected from the programmer to the back of the PCB in correspondence to a specific PCB version. The first picture applies to method 1 second and later apply to method 2. Note the pin 3 and 7 shall be excluded during the operation. If an 8-pin probe is available, it is highly recommended to use the probe to bridge between the ROM chip and programmer, or use the motherboard jumper cable to do it. For this case, we use the soldering method to unlock the native PCB which is the first approach we introduced before. First, you need to blow the ROM chip off the board and then place it into the new programmer version 3. Now we get back to the MRT Western Digital interface. In the ROM tool, click on Create Unlocked ROM since it is directly connected to the programmer. The software will automatically read and back up the original ROM, then write the unlock the ROM data back to the chip. After which, we solder the chip back on the native board, then reconnect the drive to MRT. Now we exit and re-enter the utility. Choose the correct COM port. Here we have already connected the serial port in advance. Now click Exchange Commands Unlock. The lock shows success. The drive is ready to be identified due to the long busy state of the drive. Software auto-selected the kernel mode. Here we have to manually switch back to normal mode. The drive's firmware info has already been obtained and listed here. So generally speaking, the operation for unlocking the ROM with native board has already been finished here. Now let's demonstrate how to confirm whether the unlock code is already in fact with serial port being connected. If the ROM chip has been unlocked successfully, the terminal will show Hello MRT after power on. This prompt indicates that unlock code is working well. The next thing we do is to click Exchange Commands Unlock. You can also find this button in the ROM tool or on the shortcut bar on the right side. 
The software will automatically activate the unlock code each time we power off and on the drive as long as we still remain in WD utility. Please keep the serial port connected during the operation. The above is the wrong cheap unlock procedure for WD with locked PCB. Thanks for watching.